The particle photon offers an incredible amount of processing power in an IoT prototyping platform that is both maker-friendly and professional. However, the particle photon has more capabilities than you may realize. In this video, we will learn how to use the SPI peripheral on the photon. SPI is an acronym for Serial Peripheral Interface and is used by microcontrollers to interact with external peripherals such as serial memory, real-time clocks, displays, and controllers just like I2C. However, SPI is fundamentally different. To begin with, SPI uses separate data wires for data going to the microcontroller and data coming out of the microcontroller, whereas I2C has both data in and data out on the same wire. While it may result in more wires to route, it also means that data can stream in and out of a microcontroller simultaneously and this can dramatically increase data bandwidth. On the topic of speed, SPI is incredibly simple and are often available in high speeds whereas I2C has plenty of control bytes and slow clock rates making it very slow. SPI does not use addressing in its protocol and instead uses a dedicated chip select wire that connects the microcontroller and peripheral devices directly, whereas I2C does addressing in software. This makes I2C less messy on the hardware side, and an I2C device needs only two wire to a master, whereas an SPI device needs at least three. The particle photon has two dedicated SPI modules that are located in both the digital and analog pins. The SPI peripheral that you decide to use will depend on what pins you need in your project and the speed that you need to operate at. For example, the standard SPI module operates at a maximum speed of 30 MHz, whereas the SPI module 1 can operate as fast as 60 MHz. Using SPI peripherals is very easy, and while there are many functions related to SPI, only a handful are needed for typical operation. Firstly, using SPI does not require the inclusion of any library as it is a part of the main API, and for the particle photon, there are two SPI objects that you can choose from, SPI and SPI1. Be sure that you reference the correct object, otherwise you will be using the wrong module. Just like serial ports, the begin function needs to be called before an SPI object can be used. This function can take several arguments, but these arguments are optional. The first optional argument is the SPI mode, and the second optional argument is for an alternative slave select pin if you don't want to use the default pin. The two SPI modes available are SPI mode master and SPI mode slave and allow for the photon to behave as either master or a slave device. In most cases, you will pass no arguments and just use begin. The end function is the opposite of begin and disables the SPI module. The set bit order is a function that is important when you need to choose the bit order of the output. Some devices may stream out the most significant bit first, whereas other may stream out the least significant bit first. Chances are you will not need to use this function, but do check which bit your SPI device expects first. The set clock speed function is used to set the clock speed of the SPI clock line. Different SPI devices operate at different speeds, and therefore this function needs to be used to get the clock speed correct. You can either pass a number followed by a unit, or just a number in hertz. The transfer function takes a single byte and sends this byte to the connected SPI device and also receives a byte from the connected device simultaneously. This function will return the byte received from the device. 